At this time, I will entertain public discussion and comment on agenda items. There are um, copies of the public comment procedures in the back of the room. I will be calling forward uh, first those that have previously turned in to the board clerk a request to speak. At this time, I will call Alfreda B. Robinson. Good evening. Good evening. It's good to see you, Mr. Pisa. It's good to see you too, Alfred. Yeah. I felt a need to come here this evening because at a time like this, the Times Herald Record has always made Newburgh the bastard child, the Times Herald record does not and will not and never ever run out of ink. Never. And what has happened here in Newburgh is not just a local issue. It's in other parts of the country. And a lot has been, a lot of time and energy has been expended because, for so many reasons, and we can point fingers. You can point fingers from the top all the way down to the parents. And a parent is a child's first teacher. If I had a child going to school, I know I'm supposed to go to school. I'm supposed to receive report cards. I'm supposed to contact the teachers. I'm supposed to know what's happening with my child. We're supposed to work together to find out what my child is doing and how we can both help this child succeed. Now, far too many, and it's been brought out here, and there's supposed to be this equity team, far too many of our kids are not successful Blame placing, it begins at home. There are things here in the school district. I'm a product of this school district. I'm employed by this school district. I know that racism exists. And all that being said, we cannot afford to let racism get in the way. If we can't get along down here, we're certainly not going to get along going to heaven. We won't make it. So having said that, if we don't educate all of our children, there will not be enough prison cells to hold them, to keep them from your door, my door, and anyone else's door. It's a sad day when we realize that our children are disproportionately represented, represented in terms of the administrators and the teaching staff when they can see someone who looks like them. After the end of August, we will no longer have a full principal who looks like them, who looks like me. Or actually, I should say, who looks like I too. Um, and that is a shame. That is a shame. And when I stick my finger out and point this way, I've got three pointing back at me. But it's a shame, 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 shame. If the deck is stacked against someone who might be qualified, is qualified, can do a very good job. We can always play with numbers. And from what I saw of the process for the school where I'm employed, um, if I had power, I would never have teachers who were part of a clique, a friendly group, in the interview process. That works against, it's counterproductive to helping our children see someone who looks like them to know that you can be successful. Is that important? Yes, it is. 
When I grew up in those projects down there on Water Street, I heard the things my mother said. And if I had believed what she said, I would not be here today, standing in this position. Our children need to see someone who looks like them. It is very, very important. And in terms of the culture, well, there was a time when you could spank your child. You got a word home from the teacher by the grapevine. By the time you got home and, knew, and your parent found out that you had misbehaved in school, hadn't done the right thing, and respected the teacher, then you were in trouble. A Medea bottom clipping was in store for you. And you had to pick your own switch. So, having said that, please know that I hope that this equity team and the information that it gleans will do something to prick the hearts and minds of those of you who are in positions of power here at this Board of Education. It's too bad that we only have Pop Lewis sitting there. But there are other uh, factors involved there. However, however, there's always that but. When it comes to running the building, an assistant principal has no power. It's the man who's sitting at the top, the principal. The principal. And we need more African American principals. That's a must. So any sort of um, three martini lunch or uh, back, you know, back room uh, machinations, whatever you want to call it, all decisions aren't made here. And we're aware that uh, nobody's got stupid written across the forehead. So. We have to, if we're going to be successful as a country, and, and we're part of this United States of America. So if we don't educate our children, we're only imploding ourselves. So I hope that everything I've said here tonight will be taken in the spirit in which it was given. It's still good to see you, Mr. Pisa. I love you. And I'll never forget, don't ever believe a student when he says, my daddy says I can have a can of deodorant. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Robinson. Your comments have been recorded by the board clerk. Next, I have Mary Phillips. Hi. My uh, concerns here tonight are very simple and straightforward. And I guess this would go under community outreach. Uh, I am part of the neighborhood uh, around the corner from what used to be West Street School. And I was here before uh, begging for uh, parking for the teachers so that they wouldn't take our parking on the streets. Many of us don't have driveways. And anyway, that was the past. And we almost thought we got our parking spots back until we found out now there are, I believe, office workers there, offices there. So I'm here again to plead for those of us who live near West Street School. And uh, I have a few questions. Um, how many staff will work in the building? How many off-street parking places are there for them? What's the difference between those two numbers? That's real math in the real world. And then finally, who is the contact person for further discussion of this issue at West Street School uh, Building? 
please. We feel like we're under house arrest at times uh, on our street when the street sweepers come and we only have half of the parking spaces and those who work there in the building all day, they come and park and that's where they stay. So we're out of luck. Please do something about this for us. We are your neighbors. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Ms. You. Phillips. Um, you can get your contact information to the board clerk, and we will have someone get back to you so that you know the contact person. That's Mrs. Boxford, yes. Thank you. Maureen Crocker. Good evening. My name is Maureen Crocker, and I am a member of the NAACP. I am also a former resident of the city of Newburgh. I continue to have a stake in Newburgh as I have children, grandchildren, and other family members residing in this city. I am upset that Kari Bunce, assistant principal at NFA, has been accused by the media of allowing students to play on the basketball team after cutting classes. I have known Kari Bunce for many years, and we have worked together in various organizations and community projects for the betterment of youth in urban as well as rural areas. Kari is a gifted and honorable person with integrity who is dedicated to helping young people realize their dreams and become all they can be. Kari is also the only female African American administrator at NFA. It sounds to me like the media is looking for a scapegoat for something that has been systemic in the Newburgh City School District for years. And actually, after hearing the uh, council, the district council speak, it sounds like that's exactly. Uh, what has been going on, that this is a systemic issue. The community is upset about the four basketball team students who did not graduate, and rightfully so. But I believe that this issue is more complex than that. And this actually has also come up in the presentations tonight. Perhaps we should be looking at the graduation rates of children of color as compared to their white peers. We should also be looking at the number of children of color in special education classes as compared to honors classes. The entire system needs to be looked at and addressed. In closing, I was going to ask the Board of Education why the results of Martin Ruggles' independent investigation was never shared with us, but actually tonight it was. And I am hoping that this witch hunt for certain administrators who weren't even there long enough to deserve this treatment, that that hunt will be over and that justice will be done. Thank you. I have another name here, but I'm not sure that he wants to speak anymore. Mr. Pass, do you want to speak? Withdrawn. Withdrawn. Thank you. 